Hi, welcome to the sweater episode of Yale Matt Recap Stuff. We feel like grown-ups. Yes, we're wearing sweaters like because we're it's the big anniversary dance for the 1945 graduation ball, and uh, she's my date. Oh, thank you. Or why we watched The Prowler, The Prowler, which is from the 80s. Wait, but you didn't ask me. If you want to say no. Oh. Do you want to watch The Prowler? No, if you want to be our date. Oh, do you want to be my date? Yes. Okay. That's adorable. <laughs> You're adorable. So it starts off with some old footage of the, the troops coming home or something. And then we see a, a letter written by someone named Rosemary to a guy. I have a question. It started with, uh, like, uh, did you... Did you watch the beginning or you went yeah. to bring something? No, no the... I told you. It started with like a military film. Yeah. So, you know, the troops are so coming they home. Said, yeah, they said something and I was like, what, what's the deal with Uncle Sam? They said something about Uncle Sam. Who's Uncle Sam? Uncle Where Sam is, is a character that is used to recruit people for the military. It oh, it's for it, the military? It means America. Uncle Sam. It's a mascot. Uncle Sam wants you. So, this letter is from a girl who can't wait for a guy who's been in, in the armed in services in Israel, for a while. In Israel, it's Muhammad wants you. Well, Basically, it's true. Muhammad wants you. Yeah. But we don't want to give him you. Yeah. So, you will come and so. you will defense for yourself. Alright. Yes, so, no more military. So, she writes this breakup letter to a guy... And then we see the dance. There are people from the military there, the people who were not from the military, because there was women there, and they weren't allowed in the military back then. Uh, it's not a military really? school, it's just a college, but there's a lot of people that... It's, I don't, I'm not clear about that, but there's military people here. Maybe they're leaving to join the service, maybe they've already joined it. I don't know. Anyway, there's a guy Their that's, clothes were horrible. There's I'm a, in charge of fashion. Yeah. There's a guy Terrible. that's not in the military who is a douchebag and he's with this girl, Rosemary, and someone like bumps into her so he says, get your hands off my girl, and... But we don't know that it's Rosemary. Okay, it's Rosemary. Though. Yeah, we guessed that at the end. He might have said it. He's overproductive. Might. He's a dickhead. We're watching so many movies. He says that his... Maybe he said a different name. And uh, he, he later says that the guy was just jealous because his dad has more money than his dad. So he takes her over to a gazebo to try to get handsy with her. And we see a, a man in military fatigues stalking them in the shadows. What is fatigues? Clothing. Fatigues? And fatigues. What is fatigues? It's fucking clothing. Yeah, but... He cuts the lights off. And hey, teach it me! It says uniform. I just said it's military clothing. Okay, don't get mad. Okay, well then don't ask me after I tell you. Because I try to understand like what kind of clothes. Alright. I've he's, never heard that before. He's a naked, so non-naked military man. And he cuts the lights out in this gazebo over the water. Uh, it's still pretty bright from the moon, so I guess he didn't get what he wanted out of it. <laughs> and he also has a pitchfork with him, as well as his knife. The douchebag guy resumes pressuring her into sex, shit talks her soldier friends, and then the guy puts a pitchfork through his back, which also transfers through his body into rosemary. Ooh. So blood on the first minute of the movie. Yeah, not a minute. It's right been, in the it's beginning. It's been a few minutes. Yeah, but right in the beginning. And he and he leaves a rose in her hand. Very romantic. And then, thankfully, we are in the 1980s. I was really hoping this wasn't going to be a 1980s, 1940s, per, you know, period piece movie. So we're in the 80s. So that means we got. Modern people and sweet, sweet I forgot to say something. So, I yeah. hate young, horny people. Men. Okay. They don't have control on what they're doing or what they're saying. Okay. Sometimes they're older, but like in that age, they're very stupid. Alright. And 
that's it. Like that's the way, that's how he grabbed her with him. I was like, yeah, 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 come. <laughs> and she went. Well, there's a lot of horny people in this movie, and one of them we meet right away. As we see, there's uh, some girls who are decorating the house for the graduation dance, the 1980 version. And Deputy Mark London kind of checks out the ladies, pretty obviously, scoping them out, looking at their bodies. But he's a young, strapping man, probably uh, just became a deputy. And we learn that they haven't had a graduation dance since that night of 1945. Uh, the major in charge of the school uh, lost his daughter that night, and that's the, the girl that was killed, Rosemary. And so uh, Mark takes Pam, who's the party planner, out to lunch. They talk about how a nearby store got robbed and a guy got stabbed. And then the sheriff is going on a fishing trip, leaving Mark in charge. So this is a pretty small town. They only have a couple of sheriffs. There's a court, you know, like a really bare bones type of grocery store. And they got this school. And it's, that's pretty much it. No houses, no neighbors. <laughs> There's, There's one neighbor. He's in a wheelchair. No houses. It mostly takes place on the school's campus. Yeah, and... Now, the, the corner store the, after, is creepy. Wait, after, after that scene of like Mark and the, and the sheriff, my next note was, can we start guess who's the killer? I say Mark. Yeah. And the sheriff is going away on a fishing trip, leaving Mark in charge. She thinks Mark is the killer, even though the first killing happened uh, in 1945 and it's not taking place in 1980. It doesn't and matter. Mark is like 25 years old. It doesn't matter. It does matter because he wouldn't have been born at the time of the first okay, one. Okay, so he didn't do the first one, but he could do the, the next one. Okay, there hasn't been a next one yet, but they, uh, there's a slovenly delivery boy in the Kingsley Market. He gets yelled at by the guy that owns it, who, who represents all the town people that don't really like the fact that they're having a dance again since what happened last time, even though it was so long ago. Anything? No. So the girls are all hanging out at the house, getting ready, talking about how we'll bit, what kind of a big night it's going to be, and one of them says the ominous phrase, some of us will never see each other again. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> and then we see the prowler lacing those boots up as if to confirm what she is saying, and you talked about the neighbor next door. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about him. I wasn't listening. <laughs> no, okay, he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. And he's staring at them from he's the window. Mm -hmm. And one of the girls is showing him her titties. Yay! Gives him a little We're bit in of New England, it's not possible. I'm gonna <laughs> have too many layers <laughs> to show anything. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't have titties. So I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You need Amazon Prime to see these titties. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not these ones. No. So the killer is getting ready. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> not this one. Well, you're not your titties aren't on Amazon Prime. I know. So that's what I that's why oh, I said okay. it. That's why it's a true sentence. Okay. So the killer also has a gun, which is kind of a rare th rare thing for a killer, but I guess he's a Did military he use it? man. I don't think he's ever used he it. He does though. use it. When? We're getting way at the end of the movie. At the end, but that's it. Anything okay, else? but that still counts as using But no, but I'm it. saying he has a gun, but he didn't shoot any of the girls. No, he okay. didn't shoot any of the girls, but you said he didn't use it, and he does use it. Okay, babe, get mad at me. Hey, you're... T you're you don't want to be wrong when you, even when you are. Hey, so I have to, I'm always right. I have to be the one that Your wife lets you know that you know, respect some of the things you say are not true. Okay, okay. So one of the girls, Sherry, takes a shower, and, and that's where I wrote shower. Does she have a screwdriver in it? But guess what? She didn't. No. She's about to have a knife. And then, in and then it. I, what? So she's about to have a knife in it. In the shower. Yes. Not hers. No. By the way, we put a, a, a screwdriver in our shower. 
No, uh, we didn't. She put a screwdriver <laughs> in the bathroom, which is far away from the shower, if something ever happened. So. Oh my god, just in if, case. If, if, in you're case. Ever, if you ever break into our home to brutally murder us, and one of us is taking a shit, well, at least we'll die with a screwdriver in our hand. So, <laughs> Pam leaves the house while uh, Sherry's taking a shower. Sherry looks like Audrey from Twin Peaks. Maybe a little bit in the a face. A little more. So Pam leaves, but she feels like someone is out there, and her, but her, it's her friends and a guy who are drinking, and they scare her. And so Sherry's boyfriend, Stanley, walks in uninvited, invites himself into the shower. Instead of taking his clothes off right then and there, he goes into the next room to take off his clothes. And that is when mm. our first modern day murder happens. Oh yeah. And can you tell us what happened? Was it a guy? Yeah. It's funny. I'm gonna tell you. So <laughs> Good setup, but well, you know, I asked you to tell us. You don't have to I try, I that you're gonna tell us. No, I wrote like a very weird note here and I don't understand what is it and it's too long that I've okay. even done like wanna read it. Uh yes, yeah, so that talked murder. About it already so you don't want to read it. <laughs> okay. Go. You're gonna read it. And the murder, so basically the killer took the knife and just stabbed him in the head. In the, through the top of the head. Yeah, very easily, the all the way till the the chin. It came up with mm. the chin, from the chin. And I don't think it's very easy to break the, the skull, the skull, yeah. like that. It felt like he's cutting butter, like shh. Must have been a real strong man. And besides, like he put that in, and it was still alive. It was still like struggling. Yeah. Which I didn't understand. I'm not a doctor, yes, but but still, it was you kind of shot in the head and lived. You know. Do you know that after you cut your like? <laughs> Yes, you can run <laughs> After you cut bit. your hand, yeah. yeah, the body the body's still moving for like three seconds, which is a long time to like move without the hand. Like one, you got a lot two, done in three seconds. Three. Yeah, and so he. Oh, uh, dance. He's dead. So the prowler <laughs> approaches Sherry in the shower, uh, opens the door. She's not happy to see him, and he pitchforks her in the abdomen, conveniently right under the breasts. So you can still see plenty of those while the blood is flowing. And, uh, and then there's a real cool audio fade between her death cry and the band playing the 80s power ballad at the dance. <laughs> and I tried to look it up afterwards to see if, there, if it was a well-known band, you know, because sometimes bands play a band in a movie. And no, just actors. So... But these are some good band actors in the Prowler. Yeah. And good uh, effects for the killings. So oh, yeah, far. the killings were pretty cool. Yeah, yeah and by the way, just, I wrote it here. It wasn't a knife, it was a sword. Yeah. Oh, it was a sword. Sword. Sword? Yeah. Sword? Sword. Sword. Yeah. Swordfish? Yeah. No, it's not a food. Yeah, I know, but like you say swordfish, it's not sword. Yeah. Swordfish, sword. So the sword. dance is rocking and. Pam, Do you want to read the, the note that I didn't realize? Uh, uh, which one? This, this one? one? All the same. <sighs> okay, I'll read the English. Is... No, I write. Right, I don't understand so, my handwriting. So here we go. If you don't understand the handwriting, where do you understand the broken English? <laughs> All the scene when Blondie comes home. Tells Sherry she closes the bathroom door, but no one answer, but she's still changing, and it's fine. Oh, okay. It's like a comedy, okay, though. It, so it's like when I'm writing a joke, like the idea. We haven't even got to that yeah, part okay. yet. Okay. But it's soon. So, I'll, refer, okay, but I'll refer back to that gem of a, <laughs> of a quote. So, uh, Pam is working the punch table. People are dancing, having a good time. The we band just did is a playing. spoiler to a recap. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the Mark, Deputy Mark, arrives. Pam waves him over, come over to the table. But first he has to dance with Lisa, one of the other girl, the girl that flashed her tits at the guy in the wheelchair. The slut. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so she, she's yeah. having a good time. And Pam yeah, is not happy about that. 
And so when Mark finally comes over... It's not as the bad things. It's just like, like... Pam, like, bumps into Mark, and he spills punch on Pam. So she has to go home to change, go back to the murder scene, which she didn't know happened there. And that's when the note you wrote in. She that's said, when my note comes. The shower's so she's on. coming in. The door's open. The door's open. She, there's, like, steam she, coming from it. She's say... Hi, Sherry. And it's been, like, a long time, so she can guess that her friend is... Way too long time in the shower, but it's fine. So she just closes yeah, the but door. Yeah, she could have taken a shower earlier, gotten out, dried off, had to take a shit, and then wanted to take another shower after that. I don't know. So. It's still weird because she didn't answer to her obviously. Yeah, but because that's she's okay. That great. Listen, guess what? Sometimes people can't hear no. you in the shower. Like when you try to talk to me when I'm in the shower, every single yes, time. Yes, but the thing is that. Just to make sure that and if she's you say fine. something that does not Ma re Ma mean if that I can need a response, listen. I'm shutting the door. Okay, thank you. Listen, if I come back home and you're in the shower, no, if I left home and you're in the shower and I come back home after like, I don't know, like, let's say like 30 minutes to an hour coming back home, you're still in the shower, we just make sure we call you, like, are you fine or okay? Okay. Especially when I know that you should meet me at some point and come to join us. All right, so we know the Something movie is, is weird. we know the movie is unrealistic. Because it's of unrealistic. That. I because couldn't believe that. to anything from now. Swords on. go through heads <laughs> easily, and but but someone answering someone in the shower is a real deal breaker. Yeah. So Pam goes into change and does puts on a new dress. The killer is in the bathroom putting a rose on the girl in the shower and the guy is hanging like by his neck even though he's just been spiked through the brain uh, she leaves and she starts to go down the stairs Pam does she gets a feeling like someone's present sees the shadows on the stairs and then we got a classic 80s chase scene all the doors are locked somehow and makes a, makes a tough escape but she, a, she gets outside and creepy wheelchair guy is grabbing her, stopping grabbing her from her running, head. but not saying anything. And yeah. she like rips her sweater, running away from him. And the funny thing that they noticed that Major Chapman. I think that it's Chatham. only. I'm not sure if it's like only blondes, but girls on horror movies, whenever they're running away from the from a killer, they would run like backward. The girl is after you. Just run. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So Mark. I was just wondering. Mark finds her. He went looking for her after she ran out of the dance, and uh, she explains, "Oh, this guy. Is... Oh, he's chasing me." <laughs> and then the guy in the wheelchair grabbed me. So she he goes back to investigate, sees footsteps and wheelchair marks. And so they're like, well, let's go talk to this Mr. Chatham. They go over to the house. And then here I wrote, it's not Mark, maybe the sheriff. It was there 40 years ago. Okay, so Mark goes back wielding the flashlight, uh, even though the, all the lights are on inside Mr. Chatham's house. And they go inside, they sneak in, which is illegal if you're an illegal search and seizure for police officers. <laughs> Can we go back for a second? I, I had a funny note. I wrote after, after I changed my mind about Mark. I wrote, wheelchair guy is super weird. He just grabbed her arm. That was what Matt just said. But it was a very right. super, like... You've kept the tradition going. Yes, always. So the bring, <laughs> I want them to notice the, the weird moments. The prowler is inside the house. Major Chatham doesn't have a wheelchair device for his stairs. Is he faking it? How did he get down the stairs from watching the titties in the window? with no wheelchair device on the stairs. I don't know. How do you get outside? Where the fuck is he now? So, Pam, after having this harrowing experience, is still just kind of wandering around in a house like a guest bored at a dinner party, looking at old pictures. And meanwhile, the prowler is upstairs. He's got a pitchfork. And Pam is going through boxes with a book on the desk. She sees Rosemary's page in a yearbook with a rose in the page. Ooh. Pam has just written a, a newspaper article, by the way, for some reason about this murder that happened. So she knows, oh, wow, this is the Rosemary. The guy was never caught. Oh. And then, uh, <laughs> back at the party, 
Paul, Lisa's boyfriend, is puking in the toilet, and Lisa's like, uh, when he gets done, tell him I'm going swimming by myself at the pool, so make sure he comes out and then uncomfortably pressures me into having sex. And so she goes swimming in her underwear. Paul tries to get out. They don't want him to because the sheriff has already come back and reported there's a prowler on the loose and staying in the party is the safest place that they'll be. So, but he's drunk and he's a dick. sheriff game? Mark. Oh. And, sorry, not sheriff, deputy acting sheriff Mark. You're confusing me. I'm like, what movie did so, I watch? Uh, because sometimes I don't understand everything because of the language. Yeah. So I just watch the pictures. <laughs> yeah. And so, of course, when you go swimming alone, they don't recommend it. So if you go into any hotel, they say you shouldn't swim alone. Uh, it's not because you could get a cramp and drown. It's because there might be a man in military clothing, sometimes called fatigues, that will show up behind you and, and murder you, slit your throat. Oh no, that was when he was inside of the water. Which was oh surprising. yeah, he kicked her that in the face funny. first. Yeah, he like kind of like kicked her in the face. With big combat and she boots. tried to like fight. Well, he didn't kind of kick her in the face. He nailed her in the face. She went back down and then he went in the pool. He didn't jump in because he's a prowler. He doesn't want to be loud. He just entered into the pool in real cool, gross, realistic looking underwater throat slit blood bubbling out scene. But it was really good for the 80s. Yeah. Very impressive. I thought so. The guy, what, what else did he do? Uh, he Tom Friday. Savini. He's, he's done a ton of shit. Tom Savini. You probably know him. He was also an actor as well as did all the effects in From Dusk Till Dawn. And one of the other movies that we talked about this month, but we've watched like 30 movies, so it's all a blur to me. And then, of course, the lady chaperone goes looking for Lisa. She meets a similar fate, but when she's leaving the pool area, she gets grabbed and stabbed in the neck. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -mm. I, I thought that the, it felt like the, the bodies are still alive for too long after the murder. So he's, like, killing them in a very brutal way. They're still, like, trying to get out of it. Yeah, I don't know. Struggle. And also when they were like in the wheelchair guy house, I thought that it's the wheelchair guy. Then along the movie I was like, nah, I think it's too obvious it will be him. Mm. And so what would it be a teen horror movie without teens trying to sneak off and go have sex? And if they can't have sex outside, they'll go down into the creepy basement of the place where the dance is. So that's where a couple goes down there and... Uh, <laughs> this is kind of a somewhat unnecessary scene. They're not, we're not seeing graphic sex or uh, nudity, but we do see the male chaperone down there watching it happen. Like he just likes to watch the young people. Yeah, I think that they it. did it just like to show us that it's not him. I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe he's done there and now he's gone. Maybe it's right. him. Maybe like they're throwing a little red herring bone at you. So... Okay, Mark can call to the Red Sox guy. I want to say something. The Red Sox? Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, not quite yet. So, it's been next Kingsley week. from the store comes by and gets mad at Mark for the town allowing a party at all. And he says he saw kids in the cemetery. And the cemetery was, gate was wide open. And it's supposed to be locked. So Mark and Pam drive over there and investigate. Fun fact about the... Uh, about the cemetery, so they shoot that scene on a day of Halloween in 19, uh, 1980 and the grave that was open was a real grave that was waiting for someone to bury there. Oh. Super creepy. Shit. I kind of would like to know who was buried there because they're, in a way, and then they're, what? they're kind of a, a part of film history. I don't know. Yeah. I wonder if they knew that, or the family burying well, their... I like, believe that the guy dead. that was buried there didn't know that. No, no, the family. But, um, but hey, you can own a plot and know where you're getting buried. So it'd be like, yeah, you can use that. Okay, but that probably didn't happen. If the directors are watching it, after my death, enjoy my grave. All right, so there's Do a dug-up grave in the cemetery. No porn, though. 
Uh, grave. Pam waits in the car. He finds a dug up grave, decides to enter into it. He goes in, and then meanwhile, the delivery guy, Otto, sees Pam at the window, just puts his face up to the window, scares the shit out of her. So she screams. Scary. And then Mark comes over to help. He has left since then. So then he goes back and brings her with him to the grave. He opens up the casket, and it's Lisa's body from the pool. So somehow it got over there pretty quick. And the headstone's name is wiped out. So Mark calls the lodge that the sheriff is in, and a fat redneck, plain solitaire, answers the phone. No, I just wanted to say, let's go Red Sox. Because he had a Red Sox hat Because you're... Today, like, we were really good. When the... No. When this one is going... Is going on air, it's going to be Friday. Yeah. So, if you're listening or watching this, the day it came out, the Boston Red Sox just took a two-game lead in the best of four 2018 World Series. So Yeah, baby. Go Red Sox. This guy, not probably a Red Sox fan, probably just got this hat from a lost from someone, and found yeah. bin. That, that, someone that forgot. Yeah, he is not very helpful. He seems annoyed that the Mark is calling, asking to find the sheriff's cabin. He's like, it's late! And so he basically just does some uh, foley work, opens a door, he's busy. farts around a little bit, Ocupado. as if he was leaving to go check if he's there. And then he says that the uh, sheriff isn't in his cabin. I don't know where he is. Takes a message on a plastic food bag. And then goes back to plain solitaire. Anything else besides no. go Red Sox? No. So Let's go Red Sox again. So Mark wants to bring Pam back to the dance. Because he thinks that's the most safe place for her. Even though... Some shenanigans were going on very close to that. Uh, Pam doesn't want to go. She gets a little pissed at him. Tells him to go play sheriff. Which hurts his feelings. So she feels bad. Goes back in the car. Now they go back to Chatham's. This time he has a gun out instead of just his uh, trusty flashlight. And the prowler is upstairs with a throwing knife ready and aiming at him. Meanwhile, Pam goes back to wandering around looking at pictures. And then the Prowler goes out after Mark. Uh, oh no, the power goes out. The power yeah, goes out. Yeah, I, I felt like an inside. I was like, oh no, the officer should go downstairs alone. And yeah, clearly. <laughs> that's, that's the move that happened in Inside, yeah. And he's like, well, it must be a fuse. I better go check it out. And so the Prowler grabs him and knocks him out. Doesn't kill him. Uh, he holds up the pitchfork over him, though, and the power returns back on. Pam sees a necklace hanging in the chimney. She says, ah, that's weird. What do we have here? Yanks on it, and a decomposing body, presumably of Rosemary, comes down. It oh. was a skeleton. Yeah. What did you say? Decomposed body. Decomposed that skeleton? Means, that means a dead body begins to rot and all the flesh and everything comes off it okay. and the skeleton doesn't rot so, Disgusting. so it's mostly all the way decomposed you know it's not clean like the skeletons you have in science class okay. all right no we don't have skeletons in science class no no what do you have do you say? i don't know i didn't i wasn't listening there too and it was in hebrew so i have problems with listening uh, Watch with horror movies and girls running upstairs. <laughs> of course, we had the cliche, not the cliche, I'll be safe. Our favorite part of the movie when the girl is running up upstairs. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, trying to. So yeah. she gets freaked out, she sees that, and uh, she opens the door, and the prowler has a rose in her hand. So she runs upstairs. <laughs> uh, she hides amongst the. It's in another movie with furniture with white sheets over it. Yeah. Uh, so she goes under the bed. He pitchforks through different furnitures, throwing it by. A rat comes by her head. 
but she doesn't get scared by it and make a noise. She runs out of the door. Looks just like Ben. She runs out the door into another horrible Wheeler. cliche, which is running into the bathroom. Uh, he pitchforks through the door, then breaks it off. Then he busts. She breaks off the pitchfork part. Smart girl. Uh, he busts in, and then hashtag delivery guy. He saves the day. Yeah, auto. Shoot. I thought I thought all that no, no, no. shoots him with a gun. Yeah, so all that time was a Chris wheelchair guy. Mm. I still didn't believe that it's him. <laughs> so Otto shoots him with a gun and you're like, oh. And then they have like a moment and they're like changing looks. They're yeah. looking at each other in a Gratitude. No, actually, she doesn't say thank you or anything. She's a little too shocked from it. Yeah, so Maybe the she's music... pissed that he, she, scared him, she was scared by him in the graveyard earlier. But yeah. Oh, you can come now and shoot this guy. You scared me already. But then the serial killer uses his gun. He's waking up for the last scary movie. There's in Scream, the first one, there's like the, the rules of scary movie. They say that there's the last scary part when the killer is dead. And then he's waking up for the last scary moment. Yeah. So we got it. So he blows him away with the sawed-off shotgun that he had packed with him in the beginning of the movie. Uh, he takes out his knife, and then she struggles with him, turns the knife on him, and explodes his head with it. What? She, it was a gun. It wasn't a knife. Yeah, she takes the knife and then takes his, turns the gun on him and explodes his head with it. Yeah. Which, by the way, what's, the, what's his name? Which is a pretty Tom, good effect. Tom, Tom Savini. Tom Savini blew the doll that looks like him in real, like, in real with a gun. Yes. To make it look... And so whose nice. head was it? The sheriff! Oh, he... Yeah, he and guess what? I'm always trip. right again. Yes, except you thought that he didn't use a gun on him and a gun is what killed the sheriff. But, besides that, and the fact yes, that but if the you gun... step on the brakes, you can't see what's behind you. Uh, no, 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 no. And, uh, okay. Okay, and so... Mark drives her back to her house. She goes upstairs. The shower is still on. Uh oh. And then I was like, "Oh come on!" They still didn't figure out that like Sherry is missing. There's a lot of commotion at the. At the day. Oh, and I wrote by the way. Sherry let and let her me describe it. Can I describe it with like a lot of like ego? I hope like so. Like a like. He took his mask off, and guess what? I was right. Yes. Thank you. Even though you thought it was Mark. First. Yeah, and then I changed my mind. Okay, but still. I love those movies. Guess yeah, who's the so killer? They still didn't find out Sherry's dead, so Pam very reluctantly opens the shower, and someone tries to grab her. Paul is still alive, brain dead, and that was his like last energy. So it was. And she screams. So it was like a day or a couple of days. Was it was a couple of days. Okay, so one day that it was, it was all that night. Okay, all night he was hanged from his neck in the shower with after like he got a sword inside of his head and he still had the energies to Yeah. Remember. One Amazing. last square. Very good. But that was it. That was yeah. the prowler. It was a good I time. thought during the movie that we should you and me should do should release a guide after this month. How to survive in a horror movie. Maybe. I feel like they did that too much in the first screen movie, though. Yeah, but we're going to do, like, a new one. And now there's, like, so many movies that when Scream came up, they were mostly, like, Halloween movies. All right, well, keep listening. Now we have keep all the... Keep tuning in if you want. To, if you think we should do all that, the ghost let us know. Story. If you don't leave a comment at all, we won't. So, thanks for watching. Follow us on Yale, Matt, Recap, social media. Like... Subscribe. subscribe it's down down there hit the people know where it is sometimes they don't maybe don't, they're if confused it's on full screen, if it's, it's my not. mom if my mom is watching right now she has no idea yes and she also has no idea what's gonna happen after she's gonna subscribe yeah and she if you're gonna no press the subscribe you're gonna be super rich yeah and why would you have sex and i'm gonna bring you back her? and i'm gonna what i was asking your mom
Oh my god. And I'm gonna also bring you back all the Tupperware that I owe you. Oh my god. That's it worth it. So Please. just subscribe all if right. you're a mother. Bye. And thanks for listening. Thanks for listening tomorrow. Tomorrow. The whaling. Yeah.